Welcome to News Today with WDW News Today. I'm Tom Corliss. Here now the news for April 16, 2019. Since we've been off the air, uh, Jesse's Critter Carousel at Disney California Adventure, Ant-Man and the Wasp Nano Battle at Hong Kong Disneyland, and Lightning McQueen's Racing Academy at Disney's Hollywood Studios have all debuted. For complete coverage of all those new attractions, please head over to WDWNT.com and note that videos of each and every one of those offerings can be found right here on our YouTube channel. Uh, before we go on, I do want to apologize. I know we've been off for a couple weeks. Um, that began... Uh, innocently enough when we were in Shanghai and needless to say, Wi-Fi and other restrictions of being in China uh, permitted us from recording shows there. And then we had some other problems uh, for the rest of that trip. Technically, uh, I then planned on coming back and starting the show up again over a week ago. Uh, we uh, had a death in the family, which took me out of uh, Florida for a few days. Uh, and then upon returning, uh, we did not have internet access in uh, the place where I live, the whole complex, uh, for two days, which would have been Friday's show. And so uh, we would have had a show on Monday, but I've been very busy doing some last-minute planning for the Stage 89 event. And uh, I do apologize. I know from the moment we set out to do the show, uh, do this show, we didn't, uh, we wanted to not have late shows, we wanted to not miss weeks, but you know, life has happened. And the plan now is to get back on track. So I thank you so much for your patience. I thank you for sticking with us. And uh, hopefully you'll stick with us through the next uh, thing I have to do, which is talk to you about Stage 89, <laughs> because it is coming up quick. And uh, even though it's only a couple days away at this point, we now finally have a lot of the details. And so this is a uh, last effort from us to, to convince you to come if you haven't decided to do so yet. So, uh, of course, the event is being put on by WDWNT.com and WW Celebrations. It takes place April 26th through May 1st, 2019 at the Walt Disney World Resort as they mark the 30th anniversaries of Disney's Hollywood Studios, Disney's Typhoon Lagoon Water Park, the Delta Dream Flight, Pleasure Island, and more. And all this is going to be celebrated at Stage 89, which is an unofficial celebration of all things 1989, at Walt Disney World, as you may have guessed. And uh, at the event, we'll take attendees back to a time where guests could take an amazing journey into the movies, fly through the history of air travel, learn to surf without an ocean in sight, or maybe even celebrate New Year's Eve every night. And of course, uh, we here at WWNT and at WW Celebrations have been presenting events for fans for over 10 years now. But Stage 89 is the first ever collaboration between the two. Uh, the event includes special interactive games, group rides and shows, and group meals, uh, as well as some special, what we're calling once-in-a-lifetime type events, all leading up to the 30th anniversary of the studios on May 1st. Uh, and again, these once-in-a-lifetime uh, special events uh, are going to be a part of this. Guests can register now. You can also peruse the full event schedule at stage89.com, and you can just click Register Now button on the homepage or go to stage89.com slash register to do so. Uh, it's worth noting a portion of all event registration fees from Stage 89 will go to Give Kids the World Village, a wonderful charity uh, here in Orlando, which you can check out at givekidstheworld.org. Uh, this, of course, continues a tradition of over a decade of raising funds for various charitable organizations for which WWNT and WW Celebrations have raised a combined $50,000 to date. Attendees can also plus their Stage 89 experience with three special add-on events I'll talk about quickly now, as quickly as I can. Uh, there's Pleasure Beach, celebrating 30 years of party and adventure, where you can celebrate 30 years uh, of Pleasure Island with WWNT at this radical beach party. That's what people said in the 80s. Uh, the event includes classic Pleasure Island cocktails. In fact, four of them will be recreated by Disney for the event. Special appearances by many famous adventurers from the past, it's an Adventurous Club reunion, folks. Alive, and it's eight actual original members of the Adventurous Club, by the way. A live DJ will be spinning tunes from all of the Pleasure Island cl uh, clubs. There's also a commemorative gift and a few surprises. And admission to that event includes three drink coupons per guest. And the event is taking place on Shipwreck Beach. That's the beach at the Yacht and Beach Club Resort that looks out uh, towards the boardwalk and the Swan and Dolphin. It's a pretty nice setting. That's from 7 to 10 p.m. on Monday, April 29th. There's also what I'm probably most excited for, the Hollywood That Was, Stories from the Making of the Studios, which is a private lunch exhibition and presentation event at Stage 89 on Sunday, April 28th. At this, you can enjoy stories from the creation of favorite attractions and shows at the Disney MGM Studios from those who actually created them. 
This event includes the following panels and presentations. There's Backstage Pass with former Imagineer Brian Collins. Uh, Brian did a lot of scripting for the great movie ride in the Backlot Tour. Uh, he was involved in uh, putting together the speeder bike photo op of the studios. Uh, he did stuff at Epcot. He did work at Jungle Cruise. He did all sorts of great stuff. So he's doing a presentation about his time uh, working on the MGM Studios. Uh, and as well, he does have some stories from weird stuff like the Dick Tracy premiere, which was held at the park, uh, Delta Dream Flight's debut, all kinds of stuff like that that Brian's going to be talking about. Uh, during his presentation at that event. Uh, the next presentation is Special Effects Workshop with former Imagineers Jack Gillette and James Mulder. Uh, Jack Gillette was a 26-year Imagineering veteran and was a principal special effects designer for Imagineering. Uh, and in that role, he took the creative lead on developing, designing, and installing special effects for Walt Disney Imagineering projects, spanning from the opening of Epcot Center and continuing up to recent projects. And specifically uh, for uh, the Disney MGM Studios, Jack was a part of the great movie ride, uh, bringing Catastrophe Canyon to life, Star Tours, and the Indiana Jones epic stunt spectacular, uh, among a number of things. Um, so that's what we'll be focusing on in the presentation. Meanwhile, James Mulder is a 30-year veteran of the themed entertainment industry, was also uh, at Imagineering as a senior principal designer and principal special effects designer. Uh, he played a role in Muppet Vision 3D, again, the great movie ride in Catastrophe Canyon, and much, much more. So the two of them will be talking mostly about great movie ride, Catastrophe Canyon, Indiana Jones, and Muppet Vision, but uh, I'm sure they'll also be happy to talk about their amazing work at Epcot, which included things like Horizons and Journey into Imagination and all sorts of things like that. It's going to be a really, really interesting presentation. Uh, and then as far as our final presentation, that would be the star conversation. And that is going to be with Ron Logan. And for those of you who are unaware, uh, Ron Logan had a pretty important job uh, at the parks. Ron was the executive vice president of Disney Entertainment. So he's in charge of all entertainment at Disney Parks and Resorts. Uh, he was responsible for creating, casting, and producing all of that live entertainment. Um, so there wasn't anything that passed through the Disney MGM studios in those early years that Ron was not a part of. And Ron specifically said he's going to be talking about um, the Aladdin parade, you may remember from back then. Ron was involved in the creation of Fantasmic, uh, the grand opening ceremony of the Disney MGM studios, Sorcery in the Sky, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, A Musical Adventure, uh, Beauty and the Beast Live on Stage, Voyage of the Little Mermaid, the Lights Motors Action Extreme Stunt Show, and uh, as well, he was involved in many of the entertainment offerings at Pleasure Island. Uh, this event, beyond those presentations, also include a special catered lunch with iconic studios treats. So if you like carrot cake cookies and grapefruit cake, you're in luck. Uh, there'll also be a Disney character appearance or two, as well as it's official Disney characters. We're not putting one of us in a costume. As well as uh, we'll be setting up some displays filled with rare park props, merchandise, and more from the past. So if you've ever wondered what Tom Corliss's private Disney MGM Studios collection looks like, you'll see some of that. I also have some really cool props that some friends own. Uh, that will be coming out for the event, and uh, it's going to be a really cool display and, and something really special. Also, as part of the event, we have a private screening of Avengers Endgame at the AMC Disney Springs. This is a private screening of, again, Avengers Endgame on Friday, April 26th at Disney Springs, uh, and tickets, only a few tickets are left for that as well. Do keep in mind, with Pleasure Beach, the Hollywood that was panel event, and the Avengers Endgame, uh, screening, you do need to be registered for Stage 89. And again, regular registration is available at stage89.com. And then you can add on uh, these experiences, which honestly we've priced at cost. Um, we just want to do a really fun event for Disney fans. And that's what this is all about. Um, if you don't want to do those add-ons, there is plenty that is a part of regular registration, including our two special interactive games. One of those is WWNT Dream Flight, where you're traveling around the Magic Kingdom and Epcot uh, collecting stamps in a specially made passport book you'll get to keep. And the second game is Starring Roles, Making a Movie in a Theme Park, which is unlike anything we've ever done at any of these events before, where you're going to make a mini movie um, to, to win prizes inside Disney's Hollywood studios. So all that and more part of Stage 89. Please go to stage89.com to get all the information. I'm sorry. It's a big event. There's a lot to it. I'm sorry I had to eat up so much time in the show with it, but uh, hopefully many of you can join us for that. And there are more announcements to come. So if, you're, if you live in the Orlando area or you're going to be in the Orlando area around that May 1st anniversary, 
you'll definitely want to stay tuned. We're cooking up some very interesting things that uh, may be some last minute announcements. But let's get back to the news. That's some WDWNT news. Let's get back to our Disney Parks news. Disney has announced some major adjustments to park policies, including the removal of smoking areas within parks and the adjustment of park policies related to stroller sizes, stroller wagons, and loose ice. And all these changes will go into effect starting May 1st, the 30th anniversary of Disney's Hollywood Studios. Families with little ones know strollers are an important part of the vacation. It's the napping zone, the storage place, and the spot for tired legs to rest. But beginning May 1st, guidelines on stroller sizes will be adjusted, requiring them to be no larger than 31 inches wide and 52 inches long. Many strollers on the market, including many double jogging strollers, fit within these guidelines. Disney will also begin strictly enforcing their no wagons policy. Beginning May 1st, stroller wagons will also no longer be permitted. These updates are designed to help guest flow and ease congestion, making the parks more enjoyable for everyone. Also beginning May 1st, smoking areas will no longer be present inside Walt Disney World or Disneyland theme parks, water parks, the ESPN Wide World of Sports Complex, or downtown Disney in California. Designated smoking areas will be available outside the entrances of the areas listed uh, that we just listed and at Disney Springs in Florida. And for guests who have room or dining reservations, smoking areas are available at the resort hotels. As of now, if guests plan to bring in a cooler or cooler bag to store snacks uh, and drinks for theme park or water park adventures, it's important to know that loose or dry ice are no longer permitted in Disney parks. Reusable ice packs will, however, be permitted. For additional information about these updates, you can visit the FAQ section of DisneyWorld.com. There was a lot of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge news coming out of Star Wars Celebration Chicago, mostly from a special panel that was hosted by individuals from Disney and Lucasfilm previewing the new land at Disneyland and Walt Disney World. Here's what was revealed. First of all, we've got some new concept art for the exterior of Star Wars Rise of the Resistance. Uh, it's the exterior of uh, what will be a Phase 2 offering. Meanwhile, you're now looking inside Doc Ondar's Den of Antiquities, where visitors will find a selection of mysterious and rare items for sale, representing different eras of the Star Wars galaxy, including ancient Jedi and Sith artifacts, holocrons, lightsabers, and more. As they explore the shop's nooks and crannies, they will find Doc at his desk, checking his inventory, taking calls, and barking orders at his assistants. Doc Ondar, who briefly is mentioned in Solo, A Star Wars Story, is the shop proprietor specializing in obscure and one-of-a-kind. He appears in audio animatronic form in his shop on Batu, as you're seeing right now. Also revealed at the panel, guests will be able to buy specially themed packaged Coke products inside Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Four bottled Coca-Cola products will be available in exclusive packaging featuring the Arabesh language on the wrapping. Some new details were also released for Oga's Cantina, rescued by local droid smith after he crashed on Batuu. Captain RX-24, or Rex, from Star Tours was rebuilt and made into a DJ for the watering hole. He will once again be voiced by Paul Rubens, better known for portraying Pee Wee Herman. He's back uh, to portray the character once again. Uh, he'll be playing music, uh, new music, in fact, from Figrin Dan and the Modal Nodes and an all-droid band uh, will fill the air while guests ingest themed beverages from the edge of wild space. Frank Oz will also reprise his role as Yoda somewhere in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. That tidbit was dropped. And last but not least, uh, you're looking now at some new images released from around the land. Some of the newest additions to the Star Wars, the Black Series line of action figures from Hasbro will be exclusive to Star Wars Galaxy's Edge when it opens, as Hasbro revealed at Star Wars Celebration Chicago this weekend. All of these figures are the six-inch scale. The first set is themed to the Droid Depot, will feature some of the beloved characters uh, from that realm, C-3PO, R2-D2, BB-8, and of course, DJ Rex, which is the whole reason I'm buying it. The set theme to the Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run suggests that Rey, Chewbacca, and the Porgs will join you on your mission at some point on one of the galaxy's most iconic ships. And as well, some new members of the First Order may be patrolling the grounds of Black Spire Outpost. Commander Pyre from Star Wars Resistance and as well the Mountain Trooper are exclusive to the land. Uh, this is the first we've heard of the Mountain Troopers and we're unsure what role they will play. Director of Product Development at Lucasfilm, Chris Golaher, uh, said to, at the panel, the inspiration, uh, the authenticity that we see in Galaxy's Edge, we can bring in here. One thing to notice in keeping with the theme of the land, the boxes will not feature any Disney or Hasbro logos on the front of the box. 
said Hasbro senior manager for global brand development and marketing for Star Wars. Quote, this is supposed to be a product you can buy in that world, so there's nothing to break that fantasy on the front of the packaging. Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, of course, opens at Disneyland on May 31st and Disney's Hollywood Studios on August 29th, and that's when you'll be able to get those, apparently. Meanwhile, Funko has announced that an exclusive DJ Rex Funko Pop... I'm going to be poor. Funko Pop figure will be making its way to Star Wars Galaxy's Edge at Disneyland only. The Funko site reads, quote, The infamous Star Tours droid is leaving the pilot's life to reinvent himself as a DJ. From the Star Tours music, uh, from Star Tours music to Figurin' Dan and the Modal Nodes, you never know what he'll play next. DJ Rex can be seen on both coasts at Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. He'll be curating the tunes for Oga's Cantina. DJ Rex will be exclusively available at Disneyland soon. Unfortunately, it appears it will not be available in Florida. If you live in South or Central Florida, then you're probably aware of the Virgin former Brightline trains that started making their rounds from Fort Lauderdale to West Palm Beach back in January of 2018. In May of 2018, lines south to Miami opened up and extensions from West Palm Beach to Orlando are planned to open in late 2021 or early 22. While the plan was always to have a station in Orlando International Airport, it appears that for us Floridian Disney fans looking to hitch a ride north, some extra pixie dust has been sprinkled on the train tracks. According to a piece from the Orlando Sentinel, a station at Walt Disney World, as well as a link with Sunrail's Meadowwood Station, are set to open at about the same time as Virgin Train USA's Orlando Airport Station. Quote, it's our expectation to get it done and to build out to Disney, Virgin Trains President Patrick Goddard said about the lines. Construction is expected to take between 30 to 36 months. And so you know they're serious. Goddard also mentioned that Virgin Trains signed a letter of intent with Disney last year. Quote, we've had an excellent relationship with Walt Disney World. They are big supporters of our project. Sir Richard Branson, founder of the venture capital Virgin Group, said about the Orlando line, quote, Orlando is very important to us. Connecting Orlando to Miami is a real dream. It will transform the lives of many people. The Coco Orlando line is supposed to operate at high speeds of up to 125 miles per hour. From Miami to West Palm Beach, trains will operate at speeds of up to 79 miles per hour. From West Palm Beach to Coco, it's a max of 110. That means a trip from Miami to Orlando could be made in under three hours. And for reference, driving takes about four hours, and flying from Fort Lauderdale technically takes under an hour, but between boarding and screening can take about the same time as driving. Additional stations planned include a link to Tampa, and according to company officials, construction will possibly begin while the tracks from West Palm Beach to Orlando are still under construction. We've watched the Skyliner gondola zooming over parking lots and such, but the Orlando Sentinel got to take a special look inside of one of the gondolas and has since shared a number of details about how the new transportation method coming to Walt Disney World will work. Thomas Moslem, a Disney senior vice president who oversees transportation and resorts, said the gondolas would be, quote-unquote, absolutely comfortable, as they were specifically, sorry, specifically designed with the Florida climate in mind. The gondola fleet will include a total of 300 gondolas that will offer sweeping views of the property. A typical ride on the Skyliner is set to take between 5 and 15 minutes, depending on your destination. Inside, mesh panels on both sides let in a breeze as the gondolas travel at 11 miles per hour. Reflective windows, meanwhile, will block out sunlight. Twin wooded benches inside can carry up to 10 passengers per gondola. I don't know where they're finding these people. <laughs> including modified gondolas for passengers in wheelchairs. Gondola stations will have passengers constantly loading, but much like an Omnimover attraction, cast members in charge of loading can pause or slow down the gondola line to allow for extra boarding time as needed. The gondolas are set to open in the fall, but will be unveiled uh, come May and will feature 22 character designs. Disney has announced a new offering for Disney After Hours at the Magic Kingdom this summer. Disney villains will add a wicked twist to Disney After Hours events nights uh, from June 6th to August 8th. This summer, Disney Villains After Hours will take on a wickedly fun villain theme with exclusive entertainment, food, beverage, and merchandise, and more. Here are some of the new elements to expect. A brand new Disney Villain stage show, Hades and Meg from Hercules, will set the castle stage ablaze in this all-new stage show. Villains Unite the Night, which will also feature appearances by Jafar, the Queen, Dr. Facilier, and Maleficent. You can also find uh, Maleficent the Dragon with her steampunk style and signature wicked grin let on the loose for the first time outside of the uh, uh, Festival of Fantasy Parade. 
There will also be villainous enhancements. You can discover surprising in villain, uh, the surprising villain inspired additions at Pirates of the Caribbean and Space Mountain. There's also wickedly good food and beverage. A variety of specialty food and beverage offerings will also be available for purchase, including tasty desserts, drinks, and dishes inspired by the Queen, Cruella Deville, Maleficent, Hades, Doctor Facilier, and Evil, even the Evil Emperor Zerg. Event attendees can also purchase new logo merchandise as well as items from a curated collection of the best Disney villains merchandise available. One notorious item to note, ever, ever driven to stand out in their unpredictable and audacious fashion, while the villains will be entertaining guests in the new stage show, they will not be participating in character greetings during the event to avoid this from being villains unleashed at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Oh boy, but you still, of course, are welcome to Disney Bound, so you can kind of be a villain character, I guess. Disney Villains After Hours tickets cost $139 plus tax in advance or $144 plus tax on the night of the event. Annual pass holder and Disney Vacation Club members can take advantage of a $30 discount and purchase tickets for $109. Tickets for these specific Disney Villains After Hours events go on sale April 29th. Disney Photo Pass service will now capture a spirited photo of you as your doom buggy journeys through the labyrinth of the haunted chambers in the Haunted Mansion attraction at Walt Disney World. You might even notice a few silly spooks that fill in the dead space of your photo when taken on the attraction. This is the 13th attraction photo capture opportunity in Florida. To preview, purchase, and download this attraction photo, you must be wearing a Magic Band or Magic Band 2 icon in a Magic Keeper that's linked to your Disney account. When you do, your photo will be automatically linked to your account where it can be previewed at DisneyWorld.com slash PhotoPass or in the My Disney Experience app. After nearly 20 years of delighting Epcot guests through music, fireworks, fire torches, and more, Disney announced uh, that Illuminations Reflections of Earth will be ending in the summer of 2019. And finally, we have the date. We know that the final performance will take place on September 30th, 2019. Meanwhile, Epcot Forever, the nighttime spectacular that is to replace it, will showcase all that Epcot has been and will become over the last 30 years through music, lasers, fountain, and illuminated kites, debuting on October 1st. Meanwhile, after Epcot Forever ends its limited time run, a new illumination show will debut as part of the park's uh, overhaul. This will be the park's new permanent nighttime show come 2020. The story of this new show will celebrate how Disney music inspires people around the world. Massive floating set pieces will accompany this new fireworks and laser light show, complete with LED panels and choreographed fountain displays. The yet-to-be-named 2020 show will raise the bar for Disney nighttime spectaculars, according to Disney. The team is looking to answer the challenging question, what can, we, what can we do to really blow people away? Quote, this is the next show that we're bringing on as part of the overall transformation at Epcot that's going on is really on a massive scale like we've never done. Just immense floating set pieces, fireworks, LED panels that are huge, other special effects and lasers. The big floating set pieces will also have fountains on board that do different choreographed things. It's amazing. Again, that show debuts in 2020. After seven, yeah, seven years of missions and defeating the evil Dr. Doofenshmirtz, it appears that Agent P's World Showcase Adventure at Epcot is going to be replaced with a similar interactive game featuring Huey, Dewey, Louie, Webby, and Scrooge McDuck from DuckTales. According to sources, the DuckTales overlay of the World Showcase Adventure attraction should be coming sometime in the next year. Agent P's World Showcase Adventure replaced the Kim Possible World Showcase Adventure back in the summer of 2012, and the game technology was later upgraded to allow guests to use their own smartphones while on their missions back in 2016. You can also play the game via the Play Disney Parks app. The change would continue the tradition of updating the attraction to reflect more contemporary Disney Channel programming. No further details or confirmation from Disney are available at this time, but stay tuned for more as it becomes available. Back in December, we reported that guest experience teams were to be stationed throughout the Magic Kingdom, and of course, they were made a permanent offering uh, beginning in March at the park. And since then, we told you that those guest experience teams are in fact coming to Disney's Hollywood Studios, Epcot, and Animal Kingdom soon. Well, we know that they are now at Disney's Hollywood Studios as of April 14th. Cast members on the guest experience team can be easily identified by their blue shirts with the guest experience team logo featuring the Tower of Terror. They will also roam the park and be found at the following locations during normal park hours. Sunset Boulevard near the Tower of Terror Fast Pass Plus kiosk. Pixar Place near the entrance to Toy Story Land. Echo Lake near the entrance to the Path of the Jedi. And Center Stage near the Movie Cameraman statue. There's no start date set for Epcot or Disney's Animal Kingdom as of yet. 
Starting this summer, ABC Commissary at Disney's Hollywood Studios is changing its fast, casual dinner experience to accept reservations. Guests who book dining times in advance now have priority entry. Reservations are now open for dates beginning June 2nd, 2019, and can be booked via the My Disney Experience app or by calling Disney Dining. Each night, starting at 4 p.m., guests with reservations are invited to place their order, take a pager, and find a comfortable seat. Then when the order is ready, a cast member will bring their food right to their table. This appears to be very similar to the system over at the Be Our Guest restaurant in the Magic Kingdom, which makes sense given they are in the process of installing self-serve beverage stations at the ABC Commissary. Established reservation times may avoid dinnertime chaos once Star Wars Galaxy's Edge opens comes August 29th. Meanwhile, new Art Deco elements and furnishings will be added to the space as part of this slight rebranding, as well as a new dish added to the menu, a savory new pot roast served over mashed potatoes and root vegetables with beef gravy and onion straws. Beginning at Hollywood Studios on May 1st, the new laser light and projection show The Wonderful World of Animation will debut in celebration of the park's 30th anniversary. While knowledge on the existence of this show is nothing new, we have learned that the show will have a 12-minute runtime and feature nods to every single Disney animated and then Pixar animated movie ever made, spanning Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs to Ralph Breaks the Internet. According to Ray Cobble of Disney Parks Live Entertainment, quote, a new soundtrack is about to be recorded for Wonderful World of Animation. Additionally, the team hopes to be able to add new Disney and Pixar films to the show as they release in theaters. We're going to stay relevant with this production. We can insert new content as we go along, so it's always fresh. The best part is that despite initial expectations, the Wonderful World of Animation will not replace Disney movie magic or Star Wars A Galactic Spectacular. Rather, it will just be added to the park's slate of nighttime shows. Depending on park hours, all three shows could play on any given night. After months of delays, renaming, and yes, even more delays, the Grapefruit Garage at Disney Springs Marketplace area is finally open. The Grapefruit Garage is the third parking garage to debut at Disney Springs and includes a pedestrian bridge over Buena Vista Drive directly into the Marketplace area, right around where Basin and the World of Disney is. The Grapefruit Garage provides additional parking for Disney Springs guests and cast members located just across the street from the Lime Garage. We've learned that the NBA experience will tip off at Disney Springs on August 12, 2019. The new experience, which has been under construction for nearly two years, will finally open its doors this summer. As we've learned previously, the NBA experience allows guests of all ages the chance to try on the life of an NBA player. Developed in conjunction with Walt Disney Imagineering and in collaboration with the NBA, this one-of-a-kind destination will feature hands-on activities that highlight the action and excitement of professional basketball. No matter what your experience is with basketball, NBA experience will be full of thrills and fully immersive. The NBA experience was announced back in 2015 and replaces Disney Quest, which closed its doors on July 3rd, 2017. Disney has confirmed rumors that a new Beauty and the Beast-inspired lounge is coming to Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa this fall. The Enchanting Lounge will celebrate the magic and romance of the popular Disney live-action movie, formerly Misner's Lounge, not Meisner's, people, don't correct me, and Commander Porter's. This reimagined lounge will feature four unique spaces inspired by Belle and the Beast. The signature bar will glow from the light of a magnificent gold chandelier that takes its inspiration from Belle's flowing ball gown uh, with subtle no nods to the Beast's magical rose. The formal library showcases classical Baroque designs and French furnishings inspired by Belle with hints of the Beast's friends. The garden room will be a whimsical space that draws its inspiration from the enchanted forest surrounding Beast's castle. An outdoor patio will evoke the romance of Beast's garden terrace. Uh, with charm and elegance to be found around every turn, this quaint bar and lounge will be the place where you can put our service to the test and share a tale as old as time. If you're in need of some sustenance in the meantime, a pop-up version of Mr.'s Lounge currently resides on the first floor of the Grand Floridian right by the Garden View Tea Room. The center icon of Disneyland Sleeping Beauty Castle is still very much under refurbishment. However, guests will be happy to hear that there is a peek at what's going on behind those castle walls that you can finally see. Back in January, Disney provided details of the changes coming to the castle, as well as what can be expected of Project Stardust. Of course, the goal of Project Stardust is to enhance areas throughout the parks to maximize guest comfort and access in preparation for Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Part of these enhancements include changing curbs to improve access with wheelchair strollers and making sure people just don't fall off them when they can't see because of the crowd in front of them. These slower inclines were first added to Main Street USA by the Emporium and Disney Showcase, and now we're seeing them on the curb in front of Sleeping Beauty Castle. The curb in front of the castle now slowly inclines uh, down to meet 
uh, I would say inclines up to the castle and declines down towards Main Street. The raised curb has disappeared entirely in this section to the right, and we expect something similar may be taking place on the left side. Meanwhile, new brickwork has been added too, matching the new brickwork added outside of the Emporium and Disney Showcase. The addition of a newly planted tree ties in with the new brick, giving the area a familiar but fresh look. Sleeping Beauty Castle has been under refurbishment for almost three months now, and guests, including us, have been anxious for the return of this beloved icon. But with this new reveal, we're hoping the rest isn't too far behind. Guests who visit the Disneyland Resort and choose to purchase Disney Max Pass to maximize their day will now be able to make digital Disney Fast Pass selections for nighttime spectaculars in both parks. Using the official Disneyland mobile app, guests who purchase Disney Max Pass can now make Fast Pass selections for the breathtaking nighttime water show World of Color at California Adventure and the dazzling Fantasmic at Disneyland Park. This new ability to make a digital Disney Fast Pass selection for these entertainment offerings add to the other benefits of Disney Max Pass, which include the ability to make Fast Pass selections for select attractions right from your smartphone, as well as download an unlimited number of Disney Photo Pass photos from the day. What's the latest victim of the WWNT.com maintenance reports? Well, it's the downtown Disney District sign at the Disneyland Resort, which has been removed entirely. Well, why fix it when you can just rip it out? For many years, guests walking through the Esplanade to downtown Disney were greeted by a tall, light-up sign, and now that sign has been removed, and the ground where it once was firmly planted has been paved over. If you read our weekly Disneyland maintenance report, then you'll recall uh, the following photo from the article, where nearly half the light bulbs in this sign were burnt out. It appears that instead of replacing the light bulbs, the sign has been removed entirely. That seems cost-effective, right? Uh, it's probably also part of Project uh, Stardust to clear up that walkway a little bit, but it's been interesting that it's gone. It's not the first thing we've had removed at this point. The red car trolley has officially closed for refurbishment in preparation of the Marvel superhero-themed land coming to California Adventure. The red car trolley newsboys will continue making appearances throughout the day with a modified show in front of the Carthay Circle Theater. The red car trolley will return to transport guests through Buena Vista Street and Hollywoodland in 2020, albeit on a modified new line. Disney has announced the new parking structure at the Disney Resort will be named Pixar Pals, featuring familiar friends from Disney Pixar films such as Coco, Monsters, Inc., and Inside Out. More than 5,000 parking spaces will be available within the structure's six levels, set to open no later than the end of July, although hopefully sooner given that Star Wars Galaxy's Edge opens in May. The new structure will feature a new electronic parking system to expedite guest parking. In the next few months, the Toy Story parking lot will also be expanded with more than 2,000 additional parking spaces and additional entrances. New security screening tents will be set up before guests board the Toy Story parking lot shuttles in order to eliminate the screening in the Esplanade outside of the theme parks at peak times. After months of delays, rumors, and guessing when the famed attraction would open, Disneyland Paris has just released a chilling video announcement uh, for the reopening of Phantom Manor. That's right, Phantom Manor will finally reopen to Foolish Mortals on May 3rd. Rumor has it the attraction will offer cast member previews on April 29th and pass holder previews on April 30th. In any case, we now know they're dying to meet us and when they're dying to meet us. For more information on these stories and more, head on over to WDWNT.com. If you're enjoying the show, including this really long version, be sure to like this video, subscribe to WDW News Today on YouTube for more great content, and click the bell for notifications. For the worldwide leader in Disney Parks news, this is Tom Corliss saying enjoy the rest of your today, if there's more of it left after the show, and have a great big beautiful tomorrow.